Two and a half thousand pounds. She hadn't paid you a penny at that point of the one thousand she'd borrowed for furniture. Why would you lend her the further two and a half thousand pounds, madam? She was like a sister. I wanted to help her like she had me. Did you draw up a document at that stage? setting out exactly how much she had to pay yes, from her benefits. Yes, George, and it even included the thousand of the original. Do you accept there was a document then yes. that you signed? Thank you, madam. It's very helpful. In other words, she agreed to pay £50 per month, correct? Correct. Now, that was in September of 2014. Let's pause before we get to December of 2014. But September, look at me, madam, October and November, how many £50 had you received? Uh, three. She had been paying. She was paying. That is to her credit. And that's very important because even without a written agreement, that would have given me an indication that she understood that she had a legal obligation to you. You paid, insofar as you could, that £50 for those months, correct, madam? Yes, I did. Now... I did. She actually paid for ten months altogether. She certainly did. But I'm getting from September to December. Cos she's left, she's got nowhere to go, so she goes where? Back to me. September comes, she pays. October, she pays. November, she pays. December, she pays. Around Christmas, Nicole, what did you discover? She was having an affair with my husband. <gasps> she was living under my roof and they was having an affair and it wasn't... I didn't find out by seeing them. I actually found out because they went to my mum's and she was sat there bragging about it. What did it do to you to hear that after you'd taken her into your Heartbroken. House? She's ruined my life. All she had to do was be a friend like she was claiming to be. She's ruined everything. I'm now divorced. My marriage is apart. And all along she was sleeping with him. You look at me. Cos I'm a bit worried. And let me just tell you this, sir. Before I dealt with disputes like this, I still got piles of paper in big old cases. And at the centre of them, even in great big international fraud cases, there'd be one ropey document. You understand? With eagle eye for them. And my thing, my job, would be to go through all of these documents and find the one ropey one. The one that didn't smell right. You understand? Like a fart in a shed. Right, OK. <laughs> I'm very troubled by this document. If I were to look on the electoral register, as I can do, that's open to me. Yep. That the person who's named here will match the telephone number and the address. I don't know about the telephone number because it's a mobile number. I don't know how it works. Consequently, you give me consent to go and check that. Of course. Thank you very much. Michelle, are you happy and satisfied that you have the information to do a search here? Yeah, yeah, we can do Thank that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Michelle is just going to bring in a computer. Now, just to be clear, whilst she's bringing that in, how did you prepare this document? Where does it come from? How did it come to be on this piece of paper? It came in an email. Right. And I copy and pasted it onto a Word document. Exactly verbatim. In other words, exactly as it was. You've just cut and pasted it yeah, yeah, onto a Word document. That's correct. From an email to you. And now this is just an email. To an extent. Thanks very much. Now, Michelle, just come here for a second. So give my handwriting. Just go and have a look at this. Do you recognise this mobile number? You just said to me that that's the one that you have got in touch with this gentleman. Uh, to be honest, not, I don't know numbers off the top of my head, but if that's on a piece of paper, then yes. Yes, Judge. Thank you very much. Mind handing it back? Just an email, thank you. Now, one of the difficulties here is that that mobile number mm -hmm. can be searched for and it does connect to somebody. 
Mm-hmm. Do you know who that person is? I don't, George. It's somebody at your house. So it's the wrong number. Can you explain that to me, sir? Then that, that's a misprint. So the evidence that you have, that you have been, you would say, slandered, I have to rely on this piece of paper. There's two other photos that states from Dave specifically, slandering, telling me how I haven't paid um, my staff um, and a number of other things. Now, it seems to me that you're still working. Yeah. It seems to me that despite all of this, whatever has been on Facebook is sufficiently in the past that people are still, correctly in my view, prepared to employ you. No, Judge. I haven't had any... any work from Facebook whatsoever since. And that was 70% of my income, originally. However, on Facebook, there is no evidence that you've been able to provide me whatsoever calling you a con man, just commenting on the quality of your work. Not the word of con man, no, but there are comments that he's blatantly lied regarding me and my company. What I'm told by Karen, and I want to be clear, this is critical to her case, is that you made a clear and unequivocal representation about the purpose of the money. Mm. It's for a car, I've been promised a job. Yeah, I lied. I lied to her. Did you make those representations? I I probably did, yeah. Did you say it's for a car? Yeah. You also made a clear promise to Caroline. Yeah, that would give the money back. In a period of time, what was that time frame? Two months. I was going to give it back. Did you reasonably believe those representations to be true? I knew I'd be able to get the money back. How? You're living in a shed talking. You're living in a shed and you're addicted to drugs, sir. How did you think you were going to pay it back? I was just waiting for life to give me that up again. You know what I mean? Life goes up and down. What did you use that money on? Basically, I got out of the shed, got a train to Worthing, booked into a hotel and tried to start my life again. Um, was gambling online and then won 52 grand and uh, Just pause, excuse me what? Are you telling me she lent you two and a half thousand pounds and you've subsequently won how much? Well, 52 grand at that time. We were aware of that. Yeah, blatantly aware. When did you become blatantly aware of that? Um, my daughter follows Alan on Instagram and we saw photographs of him travelling around the world, kicking cash on the floor, just having a great time. So that's why I'm here, to get my money back. You won £52,000. I presume, then, the money immediately was returned to you, the no. 2500 Nothing. No, but you've got to appreciate, I had, I, still, I had the money, but I still had nothing. I, had no, I, need, I wanted to get myself sorted. I wanted my house, I wanted my cars, I wanted to... And then I could worry about sorting everyone else out with money that's owed. But, like, I had nothing. I don't know what to say. If you needed the money, I'd give it. But saying I owe it, it's just a joke. Well, when I asked you for it, you wouldn't give it back to me. Had a holiday, I presume? Yeah. Anywhere nice? I've just pause, just got talking back. Just got and thinking about where I'm going. Oh, where, I just got where, back from Egypt. Talking? Where have you been? Egypt, Hungary, Dubai. What is it that you feel is inappropriate about her asking for this money? Just... Would you have done the same if the shoe was on the other foot? No, I, I wouldn't. Why would you not want the money back if the shoe was on the other foot? You'd borrow two and a half thousand from her and she'd come into a substantial sum. Why? Oh, I'd just be happy that she's getting someone <laughs> doing something. To, I don't know. It's not about money. That's why what, what people worry about money for. We don't... Moments with your family and friends is so much more important than money. Everything comes down to money. Just... So money's all right when you've got it? Mate, I've been up there and I've been down. And I'm telling you, you learn. The money doesn't mean anything. You want the money, that's... But, Tane, I owe you the money. You've ruined everything. What was it that you did in April 2017? I went to... I got on my phone and I looked through Amazon because something in my mind said to me, like, OK, cos when I took it to Errol and said to Errol, well, you know, di- I- I'm hearing these things and you're doing these things, he totally denies it. So I said, you know what? I'm going to... I went out and I, I, I purchased some listening devices. That's what I did. I purchased five so that I can put them in every single room. But what I did, I put them in my house. 
I put them in my home. You bugged your house? Yes, I bugged my home. I bugged the bathroom, I bugged the kitchen, I bugged the front room, I bugged my bedroom, I bugged the passage. Can I ask you, madam, for legal purposes, given your... I'm coming to you in a second, Errol, so to speak. <laughs> Bearing in mind you bugged your house, did you have a sign-up in your house saying that you had recording equipment anywhere? Sounds like an obvious thing to ask, and I suspect the answer is equally obvious, but did you? No, I didn't. Understood. Errol, no, what I did didn't, you like judge. to say? Did you know you were being bugged? Um, no, I didn't. I found out. But at the, uh, what about I, I bugged him for I three months. House. Yeah? And after the three months, I brought all the bugs to Errol. And I said to Errol, I don't want to be deceitful like you. I want to let you know what I've been doing, because this is what I had to do. I cried my eyes out to this man, yeah? I cried my well, eyes Adam, out. you said you didn't want to be deceitful. You bugged him for three months. Yes, but I said to him, <laughs> I didn't want to be deceitful to him. I, I didn't want to, like, I, I, could, I didn't have to tell him. But I brought it all to him in the end. I said to myself, I don't want to be like him, so I'm going to let him know this is what I've been doing. In the end, well... The point that you Three did... months later, basically. It wasn't like, oh, a year later. It was three months later. What you did was set up a clandestine operation, an undercover surveillance operation. You may or may not be aware that to do that, if you were a member of the police force, would require a specific application, you understand, understand. with legal consent and permission. You didn't obtain any of that. What you did was bug your house in order to collect evidence to prove your suspicion. Yes. And what? my house. And what? And my house. There was some bugs in my house too. She left some. To did you? Did, but I actually did. I did. I did do <laughs> errors too. You just told me, madam, that the only bugs were in your house. No. I want to be clear. In law, it may not make a difference, but that's very serious trespass. Were there bugs in your house? Yes, she put bugs in my house. Listen to me. Was that during the three-month period? Uh, I'm going to say yes. It is. I have to say yes. I did it all. At, I think I did that um, after I did mine. I did Errol's. What did you provide? What did you say? Well, I provided statements. And did you disclose on that form that you already had access to eight thousand pounds? No, Judge. Did he ask you for any of those things? He told me that he'd need it, Judge. Did you give it to him? No, he never came to that stage. Can I ask you again, sir? So don't you tell me, poor kids. Did you make a completed grant application? A completed one with all of the supporting material, yes or no? No, Judge. Why did you lie to me? Why? I don't know, Judge. You do know. You know what situation your dad is in now. Do you know how difficult this case is to bring against you? and what difficult legal territory he's in here, suing you. You decided not to go to university, correct? Yes, Judge. Great. You haven't made an application for a grant despite a clear and unequivocal promise in writing that you would. No difficulty. You made that decision, I'm going to believe you, at the end of August. It's very easy because the money was under his bed, it was going to be used exclusively for the purpose of paying for university, which would have been money well spent. Agreed, Dad? Yes, Judge. So, on the 1st of September, once he'd settled into the decision not to go, and it may be that he had work experience elsewhere, had you set that up? Uh, no, Judge. No. You got your £8,000 back, no problem, because it's been under the bed and it was going to be used for university. When did you get it back? I didn't, Judge. <laughs> Where's the money? Gone, Judge. What did you spend it on? Cars and computer. How many cars did you buy out of this 8,000, please? Five, Judge. With the money. You bought five cars? Not all at once. What did you say when you realised that he was buying car after car and spending your money to do it? I wasn't very happy at all. What did you say? I told him that he's got to pay it back and he'd have to we'd make, uh, pay it back weekly and we agreed on £50 a week. Don't be stupid. Stay and watch the best judge rind of moments. And I'm talking. Understood? Don't be a moron. Subscribe to Judge Rinder YouTube channel. Right now, that's an order.